China's journey to becoming a major naval power is remarkable. For many years its navy, the People's Liberation Army Navy, focused on coastal defense. However, China's global interests have grown significantly. To support these ambitions, China realized it needed a powerful Blue Water Navy. Aircraft carriers are essential tools for such a navy, acting as mobile air bases. They allow a nation to project air power anywhere in the world. The dream of operating aircraft carriers is not new for China. Naval strategists in China have long understood the importance of these powerful vessels. They saw how other major naval powers like the United States used carriers to great effect. For the plan, acquiring and mastering carrier operations became a top priority. This marked a significant shift in its naval doctrine and aspirations. The development of aircraft carriers is a clear sign of China's ambition to transform its navy into a leading global force. The path to developing a carrier fleet has been a long and methodical one for China. It involved studying foreign designs, acquiring technology, and building up industrial capacity. Today, China's aircraft carrier program is rapidly advancing. This naval expansion has significant implications for regional security balances and the broader international maritime order. The CNS Liaoning holds a special place in China's naval history. It was the plan's first ever aircraft carrier, marking a crucial entry into a very exclusive club of nations. Originally, this ship was an unfinished Soviet Kuznetsov-class carrier named Varyag. China purchased the hull from Ukraine in 1998. After a long journey to China, the vessel underwent extensive refitting and completion at the Dalian shipyard. Commissioned into the plan in September 2012, the Liaoning was primarily intended as a training and research vessel. Its main role was to help the plan understand how to operate an aircraft carrier. The Liaoning uses a ski jump ramp for launching its aircraft, known as a short takeoff but arrested recovery system. Despite these limitations, the Liaoning has been invaluable for the plan. It has allowed Chinese pilots and deck crews to gain essential hands-on experience. Numerous training exercises have been conducted aboard the Liaoning in various maritime regions. The carrier has also ventured into the Western Pacific, demonstrating China's growing reach. Recent developments show the Liaoning continues to evolve. Following the lessons from the Liaoning, China built its first domestic carrier, the CNS Shandong. Launched in April 2017 and commissioned in December 2019, the Shandong is a milestone for China's naval ambitions. Based on the Liaoning's design, the Shandong has several improvements. It shows China's growing shipbuilding capabilities. Key differences include an optimized flight deck and island. The smaller island provides more deck space. Like the Liaoning, it uses a ski jump for aircraft. The Shandong is now an active part of the planned fleet. It has undertaken numerous training deployments. In July 2024, its carrier strike group began Far Seas operations. During this deployment, its air wing conducted 380 sorties. In October 2024, the Shandong and Liaoning operated together in the South China Sea. The unveiling of China's third aircraft carrier, the CNS Fujian, in June 2022, marked a transformative moment for the People's Liberation Army Navy. This vessel is substantially larger and more advanced than its predecessors, the Liaoning and Shandong. Displacing an estimated 80,000 tons, the Fujian is a clear statement of China's intent to operate a world-class carrier fleet. Unlike the ski jump equipped Type 001 and Type 002, the Fujian features a flat top flight deck. This design is indicative of a major technological leap, the inclusion of catapults for launching aircraft. The Fujian is conventionally powered, using non nuclear fuel for its propulsion systems. Even with conventional power, the Fujian's large size allows it to carry a more substantial air wing and greater quantities of fuel and munitions. The construction of the Fujian at the Jiangnan shipyard in Shanghai was a significant undertaking, showcasing China's advanced shipbuilding capabilities. The carrier's development involved overcoming numerous engineering challenges. The successful launch of such a large and complex warship 
is a testament to the rapid modernization of China's defense industry. The Fujian represents not just an increase in quantity, but a substantial leap in the quality and capability of China's naval hardware. It is designed to be a much more potent platform for power projection across the world's oceans. The Fujian is expected to carry a more diverse and capable air wing than its predecessors. The integration of these advanced systems and aircraft will provide the plan with a much more versatile and powerful carrier capability. Section 5. Fujian's Catapults, Revolutionizing Chinese Naval Aviation The most significant technological advancement on the CNS Fujian is its aircraft launch system. Instead of the ski jump ramps found on the Liaoning and Shandong, the Fujian is equipped with three advanced electromagnetic catapults. This system is known as EMAILS or Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System. The adoption of emails by China for the Fujian signals a high level of technological ambition and achievement. These catapults will fundamentally change how the plan operates its carrier-based aircraft, offering numerous advantages over the older Stobar system. Electromagnetic catapults offer several key benefits. They allow for smoother and more controlled acceleration of aircraft during takeoff. More importantly, catapults enable aircraft to be launched with a heavier payload, including more fuel and more weapons. The Fujian underwent its maiden sea trial on May 7, 2024, and has since conducted several more. The successful integration and operation of emails on the Fujian will be a game-changer for the plan. Section 6. The Carrier's Talons Advanced Aircraft for the Fleet An aircraft carrier is only as good as the aircraft it carries. China is actively developing new and advanced aircraft to operate from its growing carrier fleet, especially for the catapult-equipped Fujian. One of the most anticipated new aircraft is the Shenyang J-35. This is believed to be a twin-engine, low-observable, or stealth fighter jet, often compared to the American F-35. The J-35 is designed to be capable of operating from both the catapults of the Fujian and the ski jumps of the Liaoning and Shandong. The introduction of a stealth fighter would significantly enhance the plan's air combat capabilities at sea. Alongside the J-35, the plan is also expected to operate improved versions of the Shenyang J-15 Flying Shark Fighter. Another critical aircraft development for China's carrier program is the Xi'an KJ-600. This is a carrier-based airborne early warning and control, or AEW and C aircraft. This combination of advanced stealth fighters like the J-35, capable multi-role fighters like the J-15, and dedicated AEW and C aircraft like the KJ-600, will create a formidable air wing for the Fujian. Section 7. Strength in Numbers, Practicing Dual Carrier Operations as China's aircraft carrier fleet grows, the People's Liberation Army Navy is learning to operate multiple carriers together. This is a complex undertaking that requires significant coordination and advanced logistical support. A major milestone was achieved in October 2024. For the first time, the plan operated two carrier strike groups, centered on the CNS Liaoning and CNS Shandong, simultaneously in the South China Sea. Operating dual carriers significantly increases the available air power in a given area. The dual carrier force in October 2024 was a substantial naval formation. It involved not just the two aircraft carriers but also at least 11 escort vessels. During these joint maneuvers, J-15 fighter jets conducted flight operations from both the Liaoning and the Shandong. The ability to conduct dual carrier operations offers several strategic advantages. This is particularly relevant in contested areas like the South China Sea or the waters around Taiwan. Section 8. Expanding the Armada Support Ships and Future Carrier Concepts China's naval modernization extends far beyond just the aircraft carriers themselves. To support these capital ships and enable true blue water operations, the plan is rapidly expanding its fleet of advanced escort vessels and support ships. Key among these are the Type 055 Renhai-class guided missile cruisers, or large destroyers. The plan aims to have a significant number of Type 055S, potentially up to 16, 
to serve as primary escorts for its carrier strike groups. In addition to powerful escorts, the plan has also significantly increased its inventory of fleet replenishment ships. Vessels like the Type 901 Fast Combat Support Ship are crucial for sustaining carrier groups on long deployments. Interestingly, China is also developing other large warships with carrier-like capabilities. The Type 075 Amphibious Assault Ship, or LHD, is a large vessel capable of carrying helicopters and landing craft. More recently, in December 2024, China launched the first Type 076 Amphibious Assault Ship, CNS Sichuan. This development blurs the lines between traditional amphibious ships and aircraft carriers. Section 9. China's Maritime Horizon, Ambitions, Capabilities, and Challenges China's investment in aircraft carriers and its broader naval modernization program clearly signals its ambition to become a dominant maritime power. These mighty ships are not just symbols of prestige, they are critical tools for achieving China's strategic objectives. The plan's goal is to assemble at least four carrier strike groups and four expeditionary strike groups. The capabilities demonstrated by the Liaoning, Shandong, and the soon-to-be operational Fujian are steadily increasing. The plan is moving from basic carrier operations to more complex maneuvers. China's defense budget continues to grow, with a 7.2% increase announced for the PLA in March 2025. However, China's rapid naval expansion also presents challenges and potential hurdles. Mastering the complex technologies associated with modern aircraft carriers such as emails is not easy. Furthermore, building a highly skilled and experienced core of naval aviators, deck crews, and carrier group commanders takes many years of intensive training and real-world experience. The future outlook for China's naval power points towards continued growth and increasing sophistication. Thank you.